All right, we are here to discuss a very important topic, one that has been debated amongst friends, family members for many years. Now we're going to debate it here tonight, and we're going to be discussing the best TV dads of all time right here on the Retro Repeat. Chris, this is a very uh, this is a very sensitive topic to many people. The best TV dads of all time. Let, let's, let's let's get right into this tonight. Was there any TV dads, and you don't have to name their names right now because I have a feeling you're going to when we get in there because this is the topic of the show. But yes. are you like me? Is there TV dads out there that just blew you away as a kid, blew you away as an adult? You wish you had this TV dad as your dad. Anybody out there? Can you relate to that, Chris? I can relate 100%, especially to like the list that I'm going to be bringing up and like the same for you. And the thing is, is that for me growing up, I mean, my dad was a workaholic. He would, um, he did whatever it took to take care of me, my mom and my brother. And, uh, and the thing about it is that, you know, me, that television was a big part of my life growing up being that escape and these shows right here, seeing these dads, just seeing what they've done for their kids, the sacrifices, like the life lessons, the morals, and it's all wrapped up within like a 22 minute period. It was just absolutely awesome because it's just kind of like, this is stuff that I could apply to my life. Most of all, it's like these dads are just like freaking Superman. So like for me, I just like, like I said, like the list that I'm going to bring up, just, it's just going to bring back so many memories, nostalgia. Um, and it's just kind of like these were men that were written within such a way that it really made a huge impression on me. Our lists are a little bit different. You so, sent me yours and I, I haven't told you mine yet, so you don't know mine yet, but you sent me yours so I can make some graphics up for everything. And we have some of the same ones, but there are two differences, I believe. I think it's two of them that are different from mine and yours. When I saw yours, they were ones that I'm like, man, I wish I would have thrown them in there too, or man, mm -hmm. I could have put them in here. And I don't know why I didn't, but I could see the ones on yours. And there's so many more that I know we're going to miss. But these are just the ones, I think, for us that came that stuck out the most to us, that had enough of an impact on us for some reason. And it's not that they're the best dads in the world. They're not perfect. All these all these people aren't perfect in any not way. Close. There's The reason there are best TV dads is because they have unique qualities about them that we love as a character and as a TV dad. So it doesn't mean that they're the greatest role model in the world. It doesn't mean that they're the perfect dad by that, you know, candy-coated version that, you know, Disney story, fairy tale version of what a perfect person should be. Nope, they're not all going to be that way, but we have them for a reason and we're going to break on in right on into that right now. So I'm going to have you go first. So give me your number five on your oh. top five best TV dads. You go first. Oh, my number five, actually. Uh, this was one of the first TV dads that I had a, that had a huge impact on me. <laughs> Not only when it came to respecting um, what police do for us, but but also he was one of the first dads that made me very well aware of racial issues within the world. With how African Americans are treated, especially like within the inner cities, and this man went above and beyond to protect his children and say, Hey, that the world's not fair. You're go you will be judged more, but you have two fantastic parents that will go, uh, that will go above and beyond to give you the best possible future. And that is Carl Winslow from family matters. Now, like the majority of the individuals are thinking, Hey, um, this is the Steve Urkel show. That's understandable. And I get that, but, when it comes to the actual lessons within the show, they are revolved mostly a around the kids and the parents reacting to those situations and teaching the kids, Hey, this is how it is. This is how you should react. And that no matter what happens th that I'm here for you, uh, the show that had the greatest friggin' impact on me was the one where Eddie got pulled over um, by cops because he was black. Um, he was supposedly in a wrong neighborhood and Carl 
being the captain of the police force, he went, he found the two cops that pulled the son over. He went into like the diner and he called them out for it saying straight up, what you're doing is wrong. It's racist. But most of all, you are screwing with my son and you are not to do that because if you do that, then you got to go through me. And that right there, it was multiple layers with Carl Winslow that I had not, so much respect for so like for carl thumbs up for the guy he he's my number five and like i said he was one of the first people on television that really made me well aware of the injustices within like the black community so there you go i love your number five i'm gonna talk about carl winslow later on but i okay. love your number five so i i am in a total agreement why carl winslow is on your list but i'll get back to carl winslow later on for me i'll okay. just say that i'll throw that right there what's your number five john i gotta give an honorary mention though these two are tied for me but i lean towards my number five a little bit Bill Cosby. over this one no no bill cosby on here though even though he's a, a shit human being i still like the cosby show yeah, he's well, not on there yeah, Jealous. come on, man. You have to love him. But yeah. this is my honorary mention because they were pretty darn close. So my honorary mention is going to be Jason Seaver from Growing Pains. How oh, could God, you not yes. love Jason Seaver? This guy could cook. He could clean. He could take care of kids. He was a professional. You know, he was a psychiatrist. He had that really awesome office that was in the, uh, you know, in the house. He even delivered a baby on an episode in an airplane, Chris. I mean, come on. Hell yeah. And he put up with Mike Seaver, the biggest troublemaker out of them all. How could you not love Jason Seaver, Chris? Dude, Jason Seaver's awesome. Great dude. I love Alan Thick, and I think he just passed away last year. He and did. It's a you know loss for the, for the acting world, and one of the uh, one of our favorite TV dads is now no longer with us. Now with Alan Thick not being here, and you're going to see a few of the TV dads in here today that aren't even here anymore on the cert. So. Kind of sucks to see, but I had to put him in as an honorary mention, Chris. I just had to throw it in there. But this is my number five, Frank Lambert, step by step. Day now, by day. Oh, okay, I love sorry. this show, man. I just I love this show anyways. It's one of my favorite 90s sitcoms to watch. In fact, I'm actually I re- I rewatch it from time to time. I'll throw it. it's on HBO Max and I'll put some old episodes on and just kind of continue on with it. It's one of those fun loving shows. But on you know, the reality is as a good dad, Frank probably wasn't it. Him and Carol were pretty shit parents for the most part. You know, <laughs> Come like, on. they weren't all they ever thought about was getting laid and having sex and going and sneaking out on the kids and kicking them out of the bedroom all the time when they're coming in with a problem. I mean, it doesn't um, matter though to me. Like you got it, you understand it. You know, you need some adult time. Frank was just a cool dude. He was a cool dad. You know, he was your hardworking blue collar guy that provided for his family. He met this smoking hot babe, Carol Foster and ended up taking on her and her three kids, uh, you know, as his own. And they were a pain in the butt. Let's be realistic. How to give respect to Frank Lambert, bro. With all due respect. He loves football. Oh, with all due respect. I mean, you get married to something like that. Would you not look at her right here in her nighty? I mean, would you not think of sex a lot? I'm just saying. I'm Jesus just saying. Babe, dude. Smoking Frank, hot fox. Frank Lambert gets number five for me just for the cool factor alone. I think Frank's a pretty cool dad. And uh, I loved him, you know, growing up watching Step by Step. And still, as an older guy, when I catch it, I still love Frank all the same. But he's my number five. What do you got for your number four? My number four is the man that reminds me of my father the most uh, when it comes to busting his ass doing whatever it takes to make sure that to make sure that like his family has a roof over his head and realizing that he's not perfect. And that is Dan Connor from Roseanne and the Connors. This is a shocker to me with you. Really? Yeah. I love Dan Connor. I'm just going to say that, but this was a shocker to me to see him on the list here for you. I did not see this one. What made you go with Dan Connor? Just because he reminds you of your dad? He reminds me uh, of my dad. He's a blue collar worker and that he might not have the best advice, but he's always there for, for his kids. He will go above and beyond, bust his ass, make sure just that he, you can't say that the kids don't know that they're not loved. 
I mean, they are loved beyond a shadow of doubt. And the kids know that no, no matter what, they can go to their dad. Just so many different things. And it just reminds me of my dad because it's just, like I said, my dad wasn't perfect by no means. Dan's character sh- struggled with drinking. Uh, my dad struggled with drinking. I mean, like there's um, there's times where we we were we were uh, nearly homeless. Dan's Dan uh, and uh, Roseanne, like their characters, like they they were nearly homeless a few times when Dan's bike shop closed, and they and they had a, custom cycle, and they had to open up the uh, lunchbox, uh, which is the uh, restaurant that uh, Roseanne and Dan owned. But they always found a way. Dan never gave up. He whether it's drywalling, uh, working on bikes. Uh, working at the factory. I mean, like, there's so many different things, and I respect the shit out of him for it. And he loves his children, and it shows. My number Dang. four is an interesting one. And a lot of people don't always give this guy the credit he deserves. Really? One of my favorite shows of all time, I've gone back a couple years back and rewatched it again. They just did a reboot of this show, too. And I love this character on this show. And for that reason, he's my number four for TV Dads. I'm going to go with jack arnold from the wonder years chris really yeah so if anybody i love love jack too if anybody doesn't remember jack let's go uh go to the video clip here for just a second here and i'll remind you of jack or jack arnold really fast so okay let's let's go to a video clip real quick here chris to uh show something for mr jack arnold have you ever thought about your life Hmm? oh well it's for school I mean, if you had to write about it, what would you say? Okay, time for a meaningful father-son exchange here. A thoughtful summing up. I get up at five in the morning. I fight traffic. I bust my hump all day. I fight traffic again. And I come home. Then I pay my taxes. The end. In a way, it kind of made you feel like you knew the guy. The Jack Arnold grunt alone, Chris, that he does. Oh, God, yes. Mm, Whenever he's disappointed. Oh, yeah, he's just when he's disappointed or when he's mad or when he's angry. That freaking Jack Arnold scowl that you just see here on his face. I just... I love the Wonder Years and I love Jack Arnold. I just think it's awesome. I mean, what a what an iconic show from the from the nineties and the late eighties this was. And, Without a doubt. You know, and I, the reboot was good from what I saw of it. I once again I gotta go back and, and finish it up. But I checked out I think like the first like seven or eight episodes. I thought it was really good. I'll get back to it. The original wow. though, just the best. Jack Arnold as a dad. You know what I loved about Jack? He was a, he was a hardworking guy. Like it's it's the common trend in all of these guys here tonight. They're all hardworking mm-hmm. people for their families. They're great providers as best they can be, even if they're blue collar or middle class or whatever it might be. They're all just great providers. Jack Arnold, I love him because there's many points in the show where Kevin or you know his sister or Wayne, uh, Kevin, Karen, or Wayne will learn something about Jack Arnold. Jack was a war hero in the Korean War that you learn about uh, parts, you know, throughout He's the He's an different- onion. He's like a fucking onion. I swear to God. Like, right as, like, the show p- progresses from season from season, you peel back and, and you see more. And yeah, you learn about him. him. And Oh, yeah. He's such a fun-loving dude, and when you see him smile on the show, he just like lights up the you know he just lights up the screen when he's on it because he's such a serious character all the time. And when you see him let loose at certain points, and you see the love that he had for his family and his children in his own way, I think he's an iconic character. And I got to go with Jack Arnold right for that reason. Uh, now I'm going to go into my number three, Chris, because you already mentioned him, so I figured I'll talk about him real fast. My number three is your number five. Mine's Carl Winslow. I love Carl Winslow. I love him for all the reasons that you mentioned uh, earlier and, and just there's so much I could say about him as a character. Family matters really broke down barriers of race and a lot of different racial issues, as you mentioned, and it did it in a great way. And it really opened up a lot of different people's eyes. I think who watched this show to some of the different things that African-Americans go through. And they did it through a fun loving sitcom and Carl Winslow was the gruff dad, 
he was the stern dad. He was the one that would put you in your place. And he was the one that was always there for you, no matter what. He was that type of dad. He would give you the boot in the ass if you needed it. And he'd give you the hug and the love that you needed when you need when you needed that the most, too. And he loved oh, yeah. every one of his kids, but Judy, for some reason, because Judy Winslow went she upstairs one day and she what never came back. She never came back. Where did we Judy Winslow go, Carl? Come Do on. we need to investigate this, Carl? Is I don't know. Carl's a cop. Playing. He must have swept it under the rug or something. <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to throw the Judy Winslow dig in there. But you mentioned Carl earlier, and I had to go back on it. My favorite episode was when they opened Rachel's place, and <laughs> <laughs> Carl... Uh, My favorite episode was whenever Judy went upstairs. <laughs> She never came back, poor Judy. But my favorite episode of Family Matters was one of the earlier seasons, maybe the second or the third one. It was at Rachel's place, and they had that gang, the Dragons, I think was their name or something. Yes, yes. And they spray painted it and beat up Eddie, and then Carl wanted revenge, and Harriet talked him out of it, and Steve helped him get the Dragons and put him in jail and do it the right way. And just showed you, Carl was a guy you didn't mess with. And he loved his family. He would do anything for him. He was a great dad. He's the type of dad you wanted to get grounded by, too. If you fucked up, you, you knew Carl Winslow would be the one you'd want probably to give it to give you that stern ass whooping that you need, you know, in some way, shape, or form. Amen. Because Carl's only going to give you that butt whooping and, and or ground you if you deserve it. That's what a class guy Carl Winslow is. He's my number three, Chris. What do you got for your number three, though? My number three is my first ever TV dad. This man, he introduced me to what it meant to love your kids, work hard, and just be that person that you could just go to and say, hey, dad, this is what's going on. Let me uh, let me spill my guts, so to speak. And uh, this is uh, Mike Brady, okay? Oh, Mike God. Brady from the Brady Bunch. Yes, yes. Yes. And the thing about it, guys, is yes, a lot of people think like the Brady Bunch is a cheesy show, but when it comes to life lessons, when it comes like to great morals, when it comes to parenting and showing what it takes to be a good parent and to really love and care for your children, Mike Brady was the definition of that for me right off the bat. And uh, Mike was just an awesome character a great dad and hell i mean he had to be making a crap ton of money to take care of all those kids i'm just saying he was an architect so not only was he a kick-ass dad that loved his family but he was a very very smart guy too i agree with everything you just said there and for that reason mike brady is my number two so we'll get to my number two because mike brady okay. is definitely number two on mine as well I used to watch the Brady Bunch as a kid every day when you get home from school. Yes. It was on TBS from 4.05 to 5.05. And yes, those are the right times. That's what they would do. They would always go five after the hour or you know, or 35 if they were starting to show. It was always on in New York at 4.05 to 5.05. And you got two episodes of the Brady Bunch. And I remember seeing them a million times, all the episodes. I know it's on Hulu now as well, I believe. Oh, Mike yeah. always provided great vacations to them. Look, they went to Hawaii. They went to oh. amusement parks. They went camping. He's he's dad, man. He's I dad. He, he's the, just the guy that you loved to listen to and learn from. He had so I'm much wisdom and knowledge. Who do you got for number two? Ah, number two. Now, this man set a great example for me when it came to caring for children that aren't your own. You talk about somebody that was dirt poor, busted his ass. He lifted himself up from his bootstraps. He, he's from McGraw, North Carolina. Uh, Philip Banks. My wow. favorite episode, and it makes me cry every single time I see it, is the episode whenever Will's father walks out on him again. I and, knew you were going to say it. Yeah, and uh, Will said, why why, why am I not good enough for him? And Philip just hugs him and says, you are, and you are my son. And that right there is so powerful, and that showed me right there that no matter what, blood doesn't, I mean, blood doesn't necessarily make make the family. And Philip was willing to step up and sacrifice to make sure that Will had the best possible life 
Philip is one of those characters that will always stand the test of time. For and me. James Avery was so perfect for that role. Who played it? Like he, he was, was born for that role. He was born for that role. He was just perfect as Uncle Phil. There's nobody that I could have figured that could ever have done it just as good as as, as James Avery did. This is number one for me, though, Chris. Everybody has got to have this guy as number one on their yes. list. I don't know how you couldn't have this gentleman not as your number one TV dad. I'm just going to get right into it. He passed away uh, what this last year. Broke everybody's heart. In fact, it's the highest. Uh, we did a tribute video to him here on the show. It's the highest rated video we have on the show. It's a testament to how much everybody loves this guy. It's, we had like over 6,500 or so at this point in time views on this uh, little tribute video to him. And it's no doubt about it for me, Danny Tanner, Full House. Bob uh, Saget plays him. I mean, just look at the blended family there. What what can I what can you not say about Danny Tanner? This guy was the I, best dad ever. Dude, we both have him as number one. Let's just be honest here. Danny was absolutely fantastic. You talk about all of the wonderful characteristics that we mentioned with like the dads before. This is them all times 100 in my opinion. Danny was the loving father, the hardworking man. Uh, not only did he work hard for his children, but he but he helped out Jesse. He he he. Helped out Dave Coulier's character, everything. I mean, just he would go above and beyond. And just those girls knew that they had their, they had such a loving, caring dad. I mean, just Danny was awesome as a dad. I mean, he just gave you all the life lessons too. And he was such a great dad at that on the show. And you talk about people like Uncle, like Uncle Phil that were born for that role, Bob Saget. As crazy as it sounds, if you ever heard his stand-up comedy and how raunchy it was, Bob Saget was just perfect for this role. Like, I agree. I could never see anybody else playing Danny Tanner but Bob Saget, and what a heartbreaking loss it was for the you know for everybody to lose America's favorite TV dad, Danny Tanner. You know, this last year, it Man. sucks to see, but his his lessons in life will live on forever. You know, he'll live on forever on all the streaming platforms. And you got it, comes. dude. You got it, dude. People will be watching Full House forever. And Danny Tanner's legacy will go on probably forever as the greatest TV dad of all time in my book and your book and many other people's book, Chris. Oh, Danny man. Tanner is the man. All right, everybody. Well, we hope you enjoyed our list. What's your list? Drop it in the comments if you'd like. Let us know who's on your top five for the best TV dads of all time. Love to hear your, your insight. Make sure you like and subscribe to the page. Click that notifications button so that way every time we drop a new show, you guys get notified of it. But for tonight, we are going to sign out. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the best TV dads of all time. Once again, want to hear what you think. Drop your comments below if you'd like to. And uh, we really appreciate you guys checking out the show here. Who's on the list for the best TV dads? It ain't going to be Chris and it ain't going to be me. But oh, nice for sure, I guarantee you that a lot of ours are definitely going to be on yours too. Thank you.